Hello everyone, it's Julie. I'm here today with a little 12 by 12 project for you. It's another one sheet wonder. So you can make this with one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock or paper. Uh, you'll make the base of the folio and a little notebook to go inside or mini journal, whatever you want to call it. So I'll give you a flip through of this one and then we'll go ahead and make one together. So on the front we've got a pocket. I'll just put a little tag in there. I've used Stamperia Rose Parfume Collection. I had some of it left. And I've managed to use a lot of the scraps in this as well. That's got a little flower charm on. A little bit of seam binding at top. I get all my seam binding from my scrap cabin shop. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, so, yeah. You could put acetate on that window. I just didn't want to put acetate on it so I didn't. I suppose just to show you that you don't always have to put acetate on a window like that. That tag fits in there lovely and I like the look of it. We've got some little ephemera pieces, flowers from one of the Stamperia packs that I had left over, little word dream there. I've gone ahead and stitched around that frame but if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't have one that sews on paper <laughs> you don't have to do that. Another little cut apart there. The closure is just one of these. In fact, I'll show you one while it's not on. Let's get it out. Big fingers, little box. Yeah, it's just one of those. It's a pearl buckle. It's not even attached permanently. I've just threaded the seam binding through and then it then becomes its own little closure so that when I wrap that around, like so, as you saw, it just fastens itself so that's that open it up it opens up there we've got two pockets here again I've just put more journal cards in nothing too fancy I didn't want those two dimensional because there's a lot packed into this little thing and I did want it to close just a little, another little flower there we've got a top tuck spot there I didn't put anything on there I liked that as it was then it opens again there we've got two more here. Now this is heavily inspired by Annie at, yes Annie, I wrote it down because you know what my memory's like, Vintage Lane, Vintage Lace Journal 75 and she made one that opens up like this. This is where the similarity ends. I will link Annie's video though so I won't keep saying that I've done it this <laughs> a bit different, that bit different. Go and watch Annie's, it's fabulous. I've just done it a little bit different. So anyway, we've got that, it opens up, we've got two pockets each. Again, I've not put anything too bulky on these little cards. You can journal on the back, replace them with other things. Tuck photographs in. I've just put a little perfume bottle there because that page will look a bit plain. A very simple button string closure with circles of paper and brads. That opens up there. Then we've got this little, it's just a teeny tiny, little notebook I've just put sheets of tea dyed paper inside and yeah very plain but I think it just fits this project nicely now here we have another fold out you can see where I'm so zoomed out now because this is going to pull all the way down Wee! there you go so we've got a little tuck spot there I'll just pop that in I've got a top tuck spot there I've got another one of the circular tags in that. Am I on screen with this tiny little pocket? I'm just moving it up a bit. Tiny little pocket there. Another cut apart from the kit. Uh, I've put that tab on. I just thought that looked nice. It, it tells you, pull me down, pull me down. <laughs> then that also flips up. And we've got another pocket there. Two more cut aparts from the kit. But you can use anything. You, I'll be showing you how to make the base and all the pockets. And you can put anything in these pockets. Any size you've got. Another little one there. Yeah, so I've not even counted how many pockets this has got. I know it's got quite a few. Oh, I've missed one. I've missed one out. Yeah, one more pocket there in back. That I'll put a tag in with a bow on. Because I like how that shows when the journal's all closed up. So that's that. So it all folds back up. I did, I was going to tuck that book into the back pocket, but of course it didn't fit. It was too big. I would have had to make it narrower and I didn't want to. I thought 
it's all packed in so nicely that will tuck in there and it's not going anywhere it's not going to fall out close that back up and you can make this with any 12 by 12 paper it doesn't have to be rose perfume then that will flip that will flip then it'll just wrap around once when it comes back just wrap it around that little pearl buckle i would not thought again i do this often me i don't think about the closure until after i've made the project so but one thing it does do is it makes you quite inventive with ways to close it and i really like that one so there we have it right i'm just going to have a cup of tea before i show you how to go on to you it's going to be instantly to me i'm going to have a cup of tea two ticks and I'm back, lovely cup of tea, all raring to go. Right, I've got my piece of paper that I'm going to be using. You can see it is a directional piece, but so was this one. I've used all my non-directional pieces from this kit. So part of it will end up upside down, but I bet you didn't notice, did you, when we were looking through that? Because I covered it all up with pockets and scraps. Right, so get your piece of paper. And what we're going to do is score it. Now I've got one underneath that I've pre-scored, but I've pre-cut it as well. <laughs> it's going to be like a blue Peter this, isn't it? Here's one I did earlier. So this is so you can see exactly where we're scoring. The scoring could not be easier. We're going to score at four and eight all the way down. We then turn the paper sideways in our scoreboard and we score again at four and eight. Then we want it in, yeah, we want it in this direction, the correct direction as we look at it. Then we're going to cut off that piece, as you can see, and we're going to do the same to that piece. And when you cut it off, you want to cut that score line part off. You know what I mean if you make these projects often. So you basically want to cut, because you can still see my pencil mark, cut to the left of the pencil mark there and to the right of the pencil mark on there. I started cutting this one and I'll show you what I mean. So there's the pencil mark. And I'm going to continue cutting up to the right of it, yeah? Like so. Right, let's score the real paper and let's cut the real paper. So this is mine. It's green. I don't know whether I want green on outside or pink. But to decide, I went ahead because I didn't want to get the sewing machine out again. And I've already made my little frame for the front. It is a different size because I was using scraps and this scrap was smaller and I've just done a little bit of sewing on. So does that look better on the green side or does it look better on the pink side? I just don't think there's much in it really is there. I think I'm going to have the green as my outside. So I have your outside part there that's going to be showing. The top right is going to be the front. I think they're going to look nice together. I'm happy with that. So go ahead and score then so score at four have we got the top of the scoreboard on the screen yeah and eight turn it around and score again at four and eight well i've scored at nine just ignore that but it didn't happen <laughs> four and eight yeah i can't count i can't count right, if you ever do that grab your bone folder Get it on a smooth bit of your desk. So that's the score line I didn't want to have there. And just bone fold the bumpy side. You'll hardly see it. You'll hardly see it. There you go. Well, you can see it, but it doesn't show up as much. But it'll still work with this project. <laughs> no, don't panic, don't panic. It's a mistake that we can get over. Right, so we've done the scoring. Now we're going to cut that. We're left with a T-shape. We're going to cut that T-shape out. Yeah. So grab your scissors, woman. I find it easy to cut to the right hand side of a score. So I'm going to do this one with the paper facing me. Go on, crack on, woman. Do it. If you've got a paper trimmer you can do this with, use that. I've got one, but it's just one more thing on my desk, in it? And <laughs> I'm so untidy. I'm so untidy. So I'm going to do it with my scissors. Then cut this part. You can cut it on the score line. It doesn't really matter. 
with the center part it's not going to fold up inside the journal properly if you don't cut it correctly i've done it wrong i've done it wrong oh my god silly woman i've done it wrong now so it really is do as i say and not do as i do do as i say not do as i do so i'll cut that then i'm going to come back in and pull that off now i need to cut that off you silly woman this is going to be hard now cutting a thin sliver off but we can do it silly woman yeah i've just told you why we need to cut there and then i don't do it i'm blaming heat it's very hot which is why i'm filming this video in parts because it's just too hot to sit in the craft room for that length of time without a really loud fan on that means you can't hear anything right i'm just going to turn over and i'm going to cut <laughs> i don't want to oh my word what am i trying to do i don't even know what i'm trying to do don't matter if i turn over i've got to cut to this to this side of it no i cut it right of it oh my word the heat's got to me the heat's got to me Becky thump. Cut it right at skull and you've just said it, so why are you I don't know my left from my right. Do not know my left from my right. Do you want to know what's really really shocking about that? If you if you've watched me for a while you'll know this, but if you're quite new you might not have heard me mention it. Before I had my kids I were a driving instructor. <laughs> And now I don't know my left from my right. Oh my word. I've had people driving around in circles. Although actually we did. That's what you do when you're practicing to drive quite often. Sometimes you drive around in circles. It's quite fun really. Yeah. At the end of the road go left, right, right, left, left. Yeah. Anyhow. So we've got our tea now eventually. Swipe sweat off my forehead. Now don't throw these away. We're going to keep them. In fact, I'll, I'll sort these out before I forget to do it. Now, we need to cut. You've got the other part of the score line off them that we've cut. Well, you should have. You should have, she says, if you didn't already cut it off with scissors. So that one's all trimmed up now. Now, this one, because I did it correctly, we've still got that bump on the edge. I'm just going to cut that off. So I'm basically cutting the uh, paper down. It'll be sl a smidgen under four inches when we cut that off, won't it? A smidgen under. There we go. And I'm going to cut it off the top bit as well. I left a little bit of that on. There we go. Silly woman. So this is our waste. Yeah, don't... Like, oh, you've not used a full 12 by 12. <laughs> you've wasted some, yeah. What can you do with that? You can't even use that as a fire lighter, can you? My Jew's got a fire these days. We're all smokeless. Mind you, a lot of you in other parts of the world might do. They don't like us having real fires much in the UK. It's not good for the air quality, which I've got to agree with, actually. Right, sure up. You're on a waffle. You've gone on a tangent. So now we've got our tea piece and we've got our two pieces. Now, one of these pieces is going to be our notebook. So... I'm going to decide do I want that as my notebook or that as my notebook. Now that's the bit that I scored incorrectly so, and I do like that. So I'm going to have that as my notebook. Yeah, it can be a feature up front at notebook now. I'll put a label or a rose or something over it. So that is going to be my little notebook. I'm going to fill that with tea dyed paper. Very simple. And this one is going to, I'm going to use that one to make this here. And this is the part, I'll bring this book back out in case you've forgotten. That's this part here, yeah? And we're going to need to score that and get that put in. So, grab my trimmer again. I may have to trim that down a bit more actually, let's just check, yeah. I think, I tr yeah, trim that a little bit more. So what's going to happen with the bottom of this T is, that is going to fold up there that is going to fold up there and then I fold that part up to make an extra little pocket yeah this part needs to go inside so shall I have it that way with pink in the middle yeah I think I will I like that and that will fold up over it so can you see what happens there 
it's slightly too tall. I need to just trim a little sliver off that again. So grab my trimmer, pop it back in. So it wants to be down to, I'll trim about an eighth of an inch off. So it's about an eighth of an inch under four, or perhaps a smidgen more. Now this time, when we fold that up, this bit is not going to be proud of the top. It's, it's going to be fine. So, now we need to do some scoring. Now we scored at four and eight, so that centre part is eight inches. It's four inches. Oh, I can't add up either now, can I? So we want to score this again. Now, we have got a score line in the centre, can you see? So I'll just let me grab my little, uh, I'll grab my little one. Rather than getting that big one back out again. Oh, it's covered in all sorts of rubbish. Rubbins from rubbers. So you can see where that centre score line is at four. We then want to score again at two. Ooh and six if that makes any sense yeah so score at two and six then just score another line there an eighth of an inch before the two and then an eighth of an inch after the six yeah that gives you this effect so that we've got a little gusset there so that we can fit a little bit more in it we're also going to score our t-piece to get these gussets here so that's that and bring our t-piece in Sounds like TP. Right, and I want to score. You can pop it anywhere along. So I'm going to use that number four there as my reference point, and I'm going to score again at an eighth after, and another eighth after that. I'll bring that line in. Score at an eighth. Oh, so that way. An eighth that way. Before and an eighth before that. I really am blaming eat with these score lines where you don't want them. So I'm just going to come in again. Where's my boom folder? Well, there's no need to throw a baby out with bath water. People have said they quite often like it when I make mistakes anyway and show you how to fix them. So that's how to fix it if you start scoring somewhere else. You can hardly see it. And you can always stick a butterfly or a flower or a rose on it. Anything. Right. Phew. So... We're here with our tea piece. We've got our score lines done. I'm just going to grab my metal ruler and I'm just going to fold here. It's sometimes different. Annie said exactly the same thing in a different video this morning. I thought it were funny when I watched it. I'm like, oh my word, I'm going to be saying that in my video because I did that in my prototype. I do like watching her channel. It's just easier to get those lines scored correctly when you've got a series of little light, little score marks together it can be difficult to fold along them so cover up the ones you don't want to fold along fold that up bend it up you want your ruler edge just up to the score mark do it again and do it again with that last one and then the folded enough I've not made definite creases so then you just get this little curved effect can you see? I like that. Right, so we've got that done. Bring back in this piece that we've folded. Just going <laughs> to fold that up there again. Now I'm just going to have a look and see which way I want this. Do I want it that way? Or do I want it that way? I think I like it that way. I like that La Parfuma on the left hand side. I just do. Then when we open it up it's green. Yeah, I want it like that. So we're going to need to glue this in, this in. But if you want to make a pocket out of it, I'm just going to come in and cut a little notch out. Also, that's we have still got a score line there. If you just go along with, with your bone folder, you don't see it so much. I've got my punch. This is a one and a half inch punch. I just grab the nearest punch. And I've just put that little notch in there. I think I might have done it with a bigger one on the last one. I'm not sure. Now, before doing any gluing now, and if you're going to ink it, come in and ink it. For the purposes of getting this done 
and not melting in the seat. I'm not inking this one. I'm doing this one completely without ink. Oh, I want to round those corners as well. So if you're going to round your corners, do that now. I'm going to use my medium one to round all four corners. I can always ink this after it's glued together. There's ways and means of doing it. And it usually involves teeny tiny little brushes like this. But you can do it. And that's what I'm going to do. Right. So, I'm using Barely Arts glue today. You know my favourites, Art Glitter Glue. But it's really drying really, really quick in this hot weather. So I'm liking my Barely Arts. I did lose the pin for my Barely Arts glue. So I bought these. They're... <laughs> I don't know what they're called, stainless steel insect specimen pins. I've had it in my glue for two days and it's not gone rusty, which it has gone discoloured, yet yeah, stainless steel can still discolour, but it's not gone rusty. So I'm thinking they actually are stainless steel because a lot of these pins tell fibs <laughs> descriptions. And yeah, it's thinner, but <laughs> it's longer. I can't see with my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. There we go. So yeah, that's another tangent I've gone off on. I'm just going to tuck that that way. Yeah. Out of me way. It needs to be out of my way, that T piece. Right, so I want to glue this piece onto there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue on the backing part. I don't want to put it on here because when I'm putting it down, I might get it all over where I don't want it. So I'm just going to glue just inside my score line not quite to the top just inside now you probably can't see this on camera but you will be able to see your own score line at home I promise you you will she says I can't even see my score line it's because I have my head right over it when I'm doing my own and I'm going to glue along the bottom again just up from your score line so I'm going to glue this on just short of the score line. That was another reason to cut that extra eighth of an inch off. And I'm going to pop this down. I'm going to fold that up. And I'm looking along the bottom here where my creases are to know that I've got it where I want it. And I'm looking how far it is from the top. Yeah, that looks straight to me. I'm going to check these. That looks good. That looks good. If you're better than me and can glue that and pop it down and get it in the right place, you, you go for it. I can't. I'm not that good. Now, before I start bending those flaps up a bit, I'm going to let that glue dry. Now I know that I've got it in exactly the right place. Everything folds up. Looks good. I'm happy. So I'll take that time just to come in and round some of these corners. Because well, you know me, I think sharp corners are offensive. They're very offensive. We just don't want no sharp corners. So that's that. Yeah, I did round that one. And that, and that. Oh, and these two. And that one. Sorted. So, I'm now going to come in and make that little pocket there. I'll get this one to show you. Undo that. Wee. And all I did is, I didn't measure a particular amount up. I just, I, I let the pattern guide me on that one. This time I've just got text. So I'm just going to, about yay much I'm thinking. Yay much. And I'll tell you how much yay much is. Yay much turned out to be one and just over one and a quarter inches i can show that straight and i just folded it up i just wanted that extra little bit of a doodad on it yeah then get your glue and just glue that down Whee. there we go mm. yeah it's been very hot here today it's not just how hot it is. In my house, I've got a system that we have panels on the roof that heat this liquid that then warm our hot, heat our hot water up. 
and I'm not joking in the summer it's like having two radiators on your roof it raises the temperature in the house by about five or six degrees so yeah it's saying it's 28 degrees out it seems same it, well, same temperature in as out at one o'clock today and now it's hotter than it is outside in this house it's horrendous horrendous well I shouldn't moan it saves me a fortune in winter and it saves me a fortune in summer as well heating my water up right so I've done that little pocket yes that's upside down yes that's upside down I can live with that because I'm going to cover it up with a couple of pockets now for pockets I've used a lot of my leftover cutter parts and scraps from the kit because as you will see we have now used our 112 by 12 sheet up this is going to be our notebook so this is your opportunity to get using your scraps so here are mine I'm just going to move that out of the way here are my scraps oh let you use what you want now i've got all these journal cards from the kit already cut out and already inked and I'll be using some of those I don't even know what that's supposed to where is it I don't even know if it's from this kit that's not from this kit surely it looks odd I don't think I'll ever use that so that's going on windowsill to gather dust for the next I don't know two three months oh I did make some curved pockets I used a die for those I'll show you the die this says it's by Eileen Hull it's special because it was sent to me by a friend of Eileen Hull who got it from Eileen Hull and yeah so far that's all I've used my two pockets you can make a pocket or you can make a pocket with your little gusset at the edge so you can fit more in and it does have other bits in it so there's quite a few other bits in it it's got a frame it's a card to make a com it's a die set to make a complete card Again, I'm going off on another tangent now, aren't I? You know me and my tangents. Yeah, there you go. It's got lots of yummy little bits in. And yeah, I suppose I could have cut some out and decorated this kit. It would have looked really nice, but I'm using these other bits that I've got. So we'll put your die set to one side, Eileen. Thank you very much. I do love it. And we'll crack on. So I'm going to use that as a pocket got that one watch me not have enough I just cut some out of scrap here we go I do have four I thought I'd cut four as you can see I didn't have <laughs> didn't have quite enough paper so I've just cut my pockets down I've cut them down a little bit and those are the pockets that have gone there there and that one can go there that one can i don't know I may put that one there now that's got to go there because of the way up it goes so has that one because i really don't want the uh, writing on the pockets upside down and i'll put that one there and that there yeah now i'm going to get my trimmer if you don't have a die to do this you can actually do a curved pocket pretty easily all you need to do Actually, I'll make one. I'll just cut this down to the size I want, which I'm not measuring, I'm just doing it randomly. And then I'll show you how to make a curved pocket. There's many ways to make curved pockets. Let me grab a square of cardo paper. Alright, we've got one here, that's a square. So grab something, anything that you've got that is curved. That's too small. Something bigger would be better. Ooh, what have I got? What have I got? I do have dies, but that would be a bit cheaty, wouldn't it? Drawing around a die. Why is there nothing circular in your life when you want it? Here we go. Here we go. Cookies. <laughs> no, it was fudge. Seasonal fudge tin. All right. So I'm going to pop that there. Hope you can see this. Something even. But use a small plate. Didn't think this one through, did I? Use a small plate and just draw around. I've showed this in a video before and then come up from where it starts to curve then follow your curve around then 
there you go I've made that a bit too long once that's cut down you've got the exact same curved pocket effect and once you've made one you can use that as a template to draw around your others I hope that made sense I'm just using these because I've got them and it makes my life much easier so that one can go there I need to cut some more off that I'll move my fudge tin it's here because it's going to get something put in it in my craft room I don't know what yet all right, we've put your flat bit up against there and you're cutting these off. That's one. That's two. Watch me have made those both the same size. I have, so I need to make this a bit smaller. If you want to measure your pocket, you just measure along the top. So I'll, me I'll measure down to two inches with that. I think that may be what I did with the other one. No, don't cut that bit off, you silly woman. Cut your straight bit off. There we go. That would have going to be another do as I say and not as I do moment. So I'll just cut that bit off. I'm just cutting these down to a size that's small enough to fit in this book. There we go. One more and I'm going to make this one two inches to match the other side. So I'll put my flat edge in. And we'll measure that two inches, turn it over so you've got your flat edge there and measure it again to two inches. There we go. I mean you could have one of those circle cut things, yeah. You could even have a compass. There's so many ways to do circles. If you've got dies, use dies. I think we all buy what we need depending on how often we're going to use them, don't we? I, mean, I used to use circles lots when I made cards. I don't use them so much now. I don't think now I would have gone and bought as many punches and dies as I own. But they served a purpose when I did buy them. Right. I'm going to come in and round these corners. Just the pointy corner on them. You could do this with square pockets, any shape would work. I just like this curve. Then I'm going to come in and just glue along those edges. I like to pick it up and <laughs> line the curve bit up first. There we go. While that one dries a bit, I'm going to come over here and glue this one on. Yeah, I like the barely arts for this. So I like to be very frugal with my glue. I only use a little bit. And in the heat, wow, does that art glitter dry quick. That's the art glitter glue. GK did a very good uh, video on what glue she uses. I think she uses different to me. It's a very personal thing, it can be glue. We all prefer different things. We're all fussy in different ways, aren't we? That's that one. There we go. And this last one. Wee. I find those very simple pockets to do. There we go. Right, the other thing I'm going to show you is how to do the button string closure. I'm just going to come in and crease this because it's folded in slightly the wrong place. Yep. There we go. There we go. I think because I'd moved it up and down so many times before I'd actually put the definite crease line in, it just didn't know what it was doing, did it? Right, button string closure time. I did go ahead and cut out some buttons. Let's tell you what you do. I'm going to pause again, have a get some water, have a blast of my fan, and I'll be back and I'll have sorted the little buttons out from here. Two ticks. 
So I found my little circles. All I've done is cut two circles of card. I've used my three quarter of an inch punch and glued them together. Yeah. I did them so I could choose which way around to put them. So I could have them that way or that way. I think, I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard to decide. Oh my word. Uh, I think I'll have them that way. Yeah. Now I am going to ink these just because this will be a nightmare to ink after the fact. I'm not even that good. Nobody's that good. Well, maybe some people are, but I definitely aren't. So, just ink them. Then we're going to punch some holes in them. Punch some holes in our flaps. And just stick them in with a brad. Very simple. It's not holding uh, a river back, so <laughs> I don't need to do them that uh, robustly. Right, I've got my crocodile here. Just put that to one side. Yeah, this... <laughs> It's very awkward when I'm filming that. And I've got a couple of circles of card there that have got my hole roughly in the middle. So to punch these holes, all I do is get a pencil. Where's your pencil gone? Here we go. Or a pen or whatever. Mark it. And then I come in and punch those two together. That's how I do it. There's other ways. And I'm using the small side, which is the... Sixteenth of an inch, and there we go. Punched my holes. Now I've got a little tub here with little bits and bobs that I'm going to be using, and I'm just going to decide what colour brads to use. Shall I use silver or black? I, th I like black on here. I've used silver or the bits and bobs on the journal, but I think I like bra black brads. As I made the other one, I just put a few of everything I was using in this little box so I weren't going a million and one boxes out. Me being organised, it's just, it's not right, is it? It's never me, it's not me. I think aliens have abducted me and brought me back. All different. Right. <laughs> so now I'm going to decide where I want to put these. So I want them about there. That'll look good to me. So I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to punch this again with the little hole. I've only marked one. Because what I'm then going to do, you're going to have to bend that back a bit. I'm going to set the depth so that I know how deep I need to go on the other side. That's perfect. And then there's not a lot that I do measure perfectly with these things. I'm just going to... I can't even tell whether that's straight, you know, because I'm not directly above it. So this might be a bit pointless for me. But this is how I normally <laughs> decide. So I'll put a, mark, a tiny mark there. And I'll look for that mark for my height adjustment. I've already got that set for my depth. There's many ways of doing this. I've got to be honest, I don't always use the same method either. So, if anyone's like, oh, you've done that before and you didn't do it like that, yeah, because I perhaps didn't feel like doing it like that that day. Um, yeah. I used to be like that when I drew. I used to go a different way just because I got bored going the same way. Right, bring your little circles back in. Bring your brads back in, which probably aren't floor somewhere now. What probably is? Oh no, they're still here. And I'm just going to pop those through. Open up the legs. There are tools available for this job, but I don't have talons. <laughs> don't have long, nice nails, so my nail does it. And if that bothers you, put something on to cover up. It don't particularly bother me. I don't know if I will put something on at some point or not. I can't decide. But at the moment, I'm quite happy. This is very fiddly for my sausage fingers. Open that up. Go on, you know you want to open up. There you go. So, we've got our button string closure on. So that should now fold up in. Button string closure. Keep it shut. I'm going to grab some wax linen thread. 
I used a bit of black wax linen thread on my button string and I remembered after years how to do a slip knot. Now, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to do a slip knot, yeah, a slip knot. I'm going to tie my knot onto that side. You probably can't see what I'm doing with my big fingers here. Anyway, what happens is, look, can you see? Yeah, perhaps you perhaps know what a slip knot is. Oh, trick knots, we used to call them at school, trick knots. I'm just going to cut that off. Now, hopefully, when I put this on, I saw Annie do this. And I'm like, yeah, wow, forgot about them, Annie. I should then be able to pull... And that knot will tuck itself in there. There we go. And that was much easier than trying to fiddly tie it round. So thank you for that, missus. And I'll just wrap it round a few times to decide how much I want to cut off. Depends on your preference. I've wrapped that round three times there. And then just snip it there. Then I've got my little things there. Right, I'm just going to grab, oh they're here, these journal cards. I'm just going to pop some of these in these pockets. And you can already see it's starting, are they exactly the same? Yeah, maybe. I had an extra sheet of some of these. We'll use that one. Then back in here, I'm going to grab some of the smaller ephemera bits to pop in. Well, that's another journal card and another one. Oh, I might just stick one of the... Perfume bottles in, that looks cute. That were a rose that didn't make it. I glued the leaf and the, it's not a rose, whatever flower. It didn't make it anyway, whatever it was going to go on. Oh, yeah. Then I can tuck another perfume bottle in there. Now, if you want to go ahead and decorate these up like I did in the first, you can do. I'm just showing you the basics of this today. That's going to take long enough when I'm waffling. Right, in here... And we pull that down. All I did there is I took again one of the cutter parts from the kit, such as that. I glued it in, and then just took in anything you want. I'm going to tuck in a sideways journal card, and I think that's the one I'm going to use. So yeah, that's one that were cut from the cover. that's that. Now on here, I'll show you how I did this one. I cut the border off one of the paper sheets and I put that, popped that there to make it a top tuck. By making it a top tuck, when I folded that up like so, something wasn't going to go falling out of the pocket, if you understand what I mean. So that's what I did there. Hmm, I may leave the uh, border on this one. So how do I want to put it? I think I'll start it there. Yeah. So that's an idea you can... It depends on the paper pad you use. And if you're using the stamp area, you can do the same. I'll just mark it there. And I'm going to bring my trimmer in and cut it. I'll give over faffing forever, deciding where the perfect... Deciding on the perfect piece of ephemera for each piece. Especially when you've got a gorgeous pad like this, because I think they all just look as good as good as each other, don't they? Just gonna, I know I'm said I weren't inking, but I just want to ink the white edge on that. You don't have to ink everything anyway. And I'm gonna glue up each side and along that top. Wee, wee. And again, just short of that crease, or you'll have problems when you try and fold this up. So that's how I did the top tuck. Now, fold that up here. I popped... Uh, did I get one out? Well, let's make one. I popped a label. Yes, I've got that. Thank you, Andrew Artimaze, for showing us where to get that from. I will link it in the description. It's from Europe. Is it the... I can't even remember the name of the store where it's from. But you can cut these, yeah, whale tail type tabs out. Right, I've got a scrap here. Mm, I don't know if I like that scrap. 
I'm gonna I could use that one yeah can you, I'm really getting low on scraps of this pad I've got a couple of full sheets left but the big scraps are getting really thin on the ground all that you know, I don't know that's gonna be t I'm gonna use this use that woman stop faffing just use it it'll match so what you need to do is you need to fold your card in half you most of you have probably seen this I think uh, Margaret at Seven Plaza had one as well it opens quite wide as that's the only thing I don't like about these how wide oh vast and creative vast and creative so I'll straight you upside down so you put your folded up card in so you can't punch anything that's too thick but I'm not too bothered it will stamp stamp area papers Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. and there we have our whale tail tab that I'm going to stick on there again this one's getting inked it'd be too difficult a job to do that one after edges after not a problem stuff like that no too difficult then let's glue it on but you don't have to use this tab use anything you can just fold over any old piece of paper and make a tab you don't need one this shape Whee. I'm hoping it becomes available on Amazon because I did the most ex the delivery actually was as expensive as the punch but I got a few other bits while I were on which made it sting a little bit less right there we go so that will now pull down you can see that took spot that took spot that pocket there then that goes up I will use something to make another pocket there. Look, even one of the journal cards that way around will do it. I'm not going to make that pocket today because I'm conscious of how long this video has become already. I will show quickly show you how to do the cover and the notebook. So I'll just... We do that. Right, I'll have a slight tidy. Right, I've had a little tidy up, got all the bits and bobs I need. So I have inked the front cover. So that's my front cover, and we're going to make it look similar to that one. So I've got my little frame. I think I do need to uh, round my corners. I think I'm just going to use the small corner rounder, see what that looks like. Yeah, I like that. No sharp corners, we don't like them, they are offensive. I think I may have already inked that, I don't know. Yeah, because I made them both at the same time and I didn't know which I was going to use on which. So that is going to be on there, yeah. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue that on. I'm going to use my Barely Arts just going to snip these threads that are on the inside I'll leave the outside ones a little bit but not too long I don't want them to be too annoying so I'm just going to glue around the very edge I always hold it by the piece I want the tag to go in because I'm really good at turning things around and forgetting which side to glue it's now become a habit right. I'll put it, I'm not too bothered if it's central or not. There we go. That's that. Now I'm looking for things to decorate it with. So I've got my ephemera back out. I'm thinking this flower could look really nice. What do we reckon? I like that, I do. I'm going to use that flower. Yeah, it's going to cover some of that up, but it doesn't matter. I like it. I like it that way. Or do I like it straight up? Oh, I don't know. Ooh, it's very difficult to decide. I think I like it straight rather than laid. Yeah. Stick it on before you change your mind. So I'm just going to put the glue here. So I don't want any glue on this side that comes over. And I'll put glue on the right hand side of the flower. And that should stick it down enough. 
if any shows through I'm not going to spit dummy out over it because it's going to dry clear like there I've got a bit if it bothers you just press it off with your finger and it does dry really clear this fairly arts glue oh I like that I was I was going to put another perfume bottle on but hey ho we went on a diff we went down a different road now I'm gonna look in my little scrap box we're running low on bits and bobs but I'm gonna I'm gonna make the most of them I'll do some more titivating on this after oh that's nice does it go I don't know no that one might look better no <laughs> I do these things then I change my mind like now. Can we do that? Yeah we can but do we want to? No not really. Ah, this is what I'm looking for. I had a few more words. I do not know what these words say. I am sure some of my French ladies who watch or any French gentlemen if I have any. I'm not aware of any watching but you may be watching and I've not left a comment. So yeah. Oh what's that one? Ooh, memories. I've got the memories word. I'd cut it off considering putting it somewhere on the last one and didn't. Oh, I think I like that there. Yeah, memories. That's already inked because, like I say, it was going to get used and didn't on the first one. Whee. Well, I'm over taking three years to decide what bit to put where. I waffle that much explaining how to do it if I did that as well. I know people say they don't mind how long videos are, but... When they get to three hours, you're going to be nodding off. You really are. So that's that. I like it. And I think I'm going to pop a pearl on that as well. I'll do that last. Right, I'm not going to make these cards. I'll show you what I did. That is just one of the journal cards. And can you see, I just trimmed the edge down. And tied a little bit of seam binding with a bit of wax thread. And popped a flower on on a bulb clip. Now that, if I'm not mistaken, there you go, it fits as nicely in that one as it did in that one. Yeah. So my next thing to do is to punch a hole for my closure. Now, it's going to go through that pocket but I'm not too bothered. You can't get things up to the very edge of the pocket anyway for the glue. If I show you that you can see it where it comes out. That that doesn't bother me. I'm quite happy and fine and dandy with that. So I'm going to come in and I'm looking at this side when I punch it because I want to know how it's going to affect my pockets. Uh, I think I'll put it there. There we go. So that's that. Did I? No, I've still got my full box of eyelets. I'm going to use a silver one. Oops. Pop that in. Use your preferred eyelet setter. Again, all of these tools, it depends how much you're going to use them as to how much you want to spend buying them and how easy you want that process to be. If you're doing something a lot, you want it to be, well, you probably want it to be quicker. Save yourself some time. Right, that's that. I'm now going to, do you know, I think I like that as is. I don't want to gild the lily too much. I don't want to put anything else on because that, with a card in, I think is enough. Yeah, I don't want to do anything more to that one. I like it as is. A little bit more simpler than the other one, isn't it? Right, I'm going to grab some seam binding. You want about a yard of seam binding. Ooh. <laughs> Shall we have pink or shall we have green again? I do like the green. Shall we have the lighter green? Yeah, I think I might have the lighter green on this one. Oh, I could have the pink. Oh, make your mind up, woman. I'm going to have the pink because there's a lot less pink on the front of this one. I think this one might be about a metre. It's just over a metre, that, which is a metre. How's a metre in yards? The yard's what, 36 inches, isn't it? I'm not even going to go there. I'll measure it in inches. Just measure it, woman. Stop trying to do maths in your head. We've already established you can't do maths today. And you can't... You don't know your left and your right either. That's about 120 inches altogether, that. But you don't have to have it that long. 
No, it's not. That's 120 centimetres. It's a bit more than a metre. Jeepers. Use the inches mark on your board. Crazy lady. 22 and 20. It's about 44 inches. Might be a bit long, so don't listen to me. I tend to start with end <laughs> of my full skein and then cut off when I get what I want. Right, my closure. This was a, mm, how are we going to do closure and we didn't think about one. So I've got one of these little pearl buckles. You can get these on Etsy, you can get, I'm not going to link them because I've had them from different places. And again, my first ever ones came from Wild Orchid Crafts. Wild Orchid Crafts, yes. They don't currently deliver to the UK, but they do deliver to other countries. But you may get them uh, at, more, at a more affordable price. They tend to be cheaper on Wild Orchid when you're buying a lot. Right, so I've just threaded that through like a buckle. Now I want to thread both ends of my seam binding through that eyelet hole. Oh, that's why I did a big one, yeah. You've seen me try to didn't think through holes before. Sometimes it just goes completely wrong. Wee, let's pull it through. Pull it through. Is that going to be upside down? Of course it is, but you need to twist it. There you go. You want your love art the right way up? Just turn that. There you go. So that's what it looks like unfastened. Let's put that back in. I'm also going to steal the big tag from there. It's just a matter of cutting a piece down to the size you want. It's not a difficult tag, it's not a... There's no rocket science involved. Oh, undo them, woman. Can you tell I'm getting hot now? I'm getting hot. <laughs> what you done? Ah, da -da. This should make for some good bloopers. I've not done any for a while. Yes, yeah, so that's going to go in there. Da da! Fold that up, tuck that in. We just need to do notebook when I've showed you this closed. Oh, can't even be bothered to wind them up. It's too hot. It's too hot to do that. Ooh, look at that. Then just wrap it round, wrap it round, then. Put that down around the bottom first and you could do that with a button or anything if you don't have this love art a, but uh, ooh, a button with a shank on back would be perfect and there we go i like how that goes we've just got the flower showing at the top that does not need anything else on the front i'm happy with that so let's bob that to one side and i'll just quickly go over the notebook i'm going to round the corners on the notebook we'll give that medium I may end up rounding these again if notebook's too big to fit in. Well, we, we just don't know. We don't know. And I'm going to grab, I grabbed just one sheet of tea dyed paper and that was enough to make all my pages. That like two ticks. There we go, found one. Now if you're using US letter size, it, you, you may want a little bit more than one sheet. Here, our, our sheets are 11 and something wide, so I don't know what. So I'm just going to cut this to like three and, just under three and three quarters. Whee. And just under three and three quarters. Then my last piece, I just have to take a little sliver off, just under three and three quarters. Then I take all three of them and fold them over and then I've got six leaves which is 12 sides altogether, 12 pages. Right, I'm going to have to trim them down a little bit because they're going to be slightly too long. Again, if you're using US letter size, you may not have to trim them because you're, you're, I don't know, I forget whether it's wider or longer or anyway. You'll get it. So my notebook, it's, I'm just going to cut a little bit off my notebook. So it's just slightly under four, so it won't stick out at the top of my book too much. So it's like an eighth under four. And then I'm going to have to round them again, aren't I? Whee! And then I'm going to cut this down to 
three and mm, three and a an half just over three and a half there we go easy pocket if you've got scraps and you want to use them go ahead and use your scraps that should fit in there now just perfectly and I've used my twisty stapler to staple the centre um, I can't remember a lady asked me about that the other day I can't remember I can't remember who it was left a comment when I'd tied something I'd fastened a notebook with twine and says that's brilliant because I couldn't she was having trouble stapling it with her stapler this stapler is really good so what I'm going to do it, it's, it twists and this is why it twists right, make sure I've got my creases lined up clip this with a clip if you want to I just like to live dangerously and then you can pop it in and staple where your crease is that's looking straight it's a lot easier to store in your craft room than one of them big long arm staplers and it's a lot cheaper as well it's about six pound on amazon in uk i think it's similar in us they are on my amazon storefront if you're wondering where i get anything from that i use anything that's available on amazon i've got it linked sometimes if the item's not in stock on amazon it doesn't show up because I've got it linked to another website that doesn't show you things that are out of stock. I'm going to unlink that because it's not working for me. You might want the details still to bite somewhere else. So yeah. Right, so that's my notebook. And all I'm going to need on the front of there is just a little bit of something something. I don't know what. Nothing too bulky. Do we want a perfume bottle? I don't know. I could have a bird sat on that postmark. <laughs> Good, but I don't want to. I don't even want to cover that crease up that I put in by accident now. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm running really low. I need to fussy cut some more. Oh, we've got that diary. We know it's not a diary. But I'm going to I'm gonna use it. I'm going to pop it on. Because I can. I'm just going to grunge that up a bit as well. Because it's a bit bright white for my liking. I could then pop something in front. Do you know what? I'm just going to glue it on either side. Could be a diary. You might not have a lot to write in a diary. I don't write a diary. That probably would be... Oh, I'll put it there. Cover that crease up. Yeah. There you go. It didn't have to be at the bottom, did it? And you could pop something up underneath it. Diary. And then we'll just decorate it with one little flower. Oh, I like that yeah now these are self adhesive half at time I can't get back enough half at time back in rips back at sticker off like that but it does make them a little bit thinner and you have to glue them on yeah don't bother me they're so pretty I still use them just be aware that they may not work as stickers there we go I'm quite happy with that so let's bring my journal back so we'll pop the last item in which is the notebook that's why I didn't want to <laughs> wind this up oh. so that will go in there we'll wind that up yeah I know I've not done all the other little titivating things on it it uh, yeah it's all personal anyway, isn't it? That bit of decoration. The chances of it will be much more difficult to try and do it exactly as I did it than just do it yourself. Do it yourself. Right. The last thing I want to do is pop a pearl on that flower. And then I'm done. So, I'm going to use... I don't know whether Barely Arts will glue things like this. So I'm using my Art Glitter Glue. It also likes to volcano in this hot weather and the Barely Arts doesn't so that's another reason I like it now I've just got to decide what colour pearl to use big decision that, big decision I think I'm just going to go for that pink one I don't think I've got a big enough green one yeah, go for that I've got a sticky pickup tool here somewhere I've probably lost it oh, here we go, found it Wee. Oui. 
Oh, there we go. I like that. That's pretty. So, there we go. So all I need to do is make another one of them and another one of them. Because that one's now looking a bit bare, isn't it? But yeah, we'll, we'll sort that out ready for photograph. So, there we have it. I don't want to wrap that round now because my gem is going to need a bit of time to dry it sliding. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open that up. There you go, and prop it so it's level. And give that to gem time to dry. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I made some sense. I'm feeling like I've, I've took waffling to a whole new level today with eat. I forget what I'm saying. So, yeah. Don't forget to go and check out Annie and how she does hers. And everyone I have mentioned in this video will be linked in my description box below. Also, all the products I've used and where I've got them from. So, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.